so here we are going to discuss about the nematodes earlier we have discussed these cystodes and trematodes and now it's turn of the nematodes and in nematodes we will be discussing about different types of nematodes and their life cycle but not the diagnosis part for the diagnosis part you can learn from the uh, general parasitology section where i have discussed the uh, general overview of the diagnosis of different parasitic infections so by learning that you will be able to write the diagnosis of any parasitic infections by your own in the exams so let's turn to the our uh, topic of discussion to you that is the nematodes so first of all we will be seeing the classification of the nematodes okay so there are two classification one is based on whether they are infesting the small intestine or the large intestine and then the second one is based on whether they are producing eggs or the larvae so first of all coming to the whether they are infesting a small intestine or large intestine so those nematodes which are residing or whose habitats are the small intestine those are the roundworm hookworm and the strong hyloides so this roundworm which is otherwise also called as the ascaris lumbricoids then hookworm and the strong hyloides these three are the habit uh, i mean uh, these three nematodes has the habitat of small intestine okay i mean they are they reside in the small intestine they infest the small intestine then what are the nematodes which infest the large intestine those are the trichuris tritura and the enterobius vermicularis so these two infest into the large intestine now what is the importance of knowing this so importance of knowing this is that importance of knowing this is that these uh, worms or these nematodes that is ascaris lumbricoids hookworm and the strong hyloides these whose uh, habitat is a small intestine they have the chance to go to the lungs also okay they have the chance to go to the lungs also but other two nematodes that is trichuris trichura and the enterobius vermicularis they do not go into the lungs because they already have got a big home that is large intestine so they do not want to roam around but those nematodes like ascaris lumbricoids the hookworms which are also called as the ankylostoma duodenal that is the old world hookworm and the nicator americanus which is called as the new world hookworm that is written here ad and na so the hookworm plus the strong hyloides they have got a small home that is small intestine that's why they want to roam around in the other parts of the body as well so they go to the lungs as well so that's the importance of knowing the normal habitat of the different nematodes now coming to the based on the eggs and the larva so based on the eggs and the larva they are classified into the viviparous oviparous and the ovoviviparous viviparous means the nematodes uh, those nematodes who do not lay eggs rather they give birth to the larva those are like filaria trichinella and the dracunculus so uh, we are not going to learn about those those are, those are separate topics but other two are other two classifications are important that is oviparous and the ovoviviparous so oviparous means those uh, nematodes which uh, which lay eggs and after the eggs are laid down then after some time the larva is released from those eggs so those are ov oviparous those are oviparous okay and the example of oviparous are the example of oviparous are the trichuris trichura enterobius vermicularis ascaris lumbricoides and the hookworm these all are the oviparous these all are the oviparous while this strong hyloides starcorelis this strong hyloides starcorelis is only one which has which is a ovo viviparous that means they lay eggs but immediately after release of the eggs the larva gets out from that egg okay so that's why it is called as the ovo viviparous that is that is neither uh, oviparous nor viviparous that is ovo viviparous it lays eggs and immediately after the eggs are laid down the larva will get out from that egg so strong hyloides is the ovo viviparous and all other uh, nematodes which are mentioned here trichuris enterobius ascaris the ankylostoma and the nicator americanus these all are the oviparous these all are the oviparous okay because they lay eggs now coming to the life cycle of all of these so i have made this table i have made this table so that it becomes easy to easy for all of us to uh, revise it and also to learn the life cycle of the different 
nematodes so first of all coming to the mode of transmission of the trichuris trichura and the interobius vermiculus because they are completely similar they are completely similar see here they are completely similar all of the things of the trichuris trichura and the interobius vermicularis are same for each other so first of all coming to the mode of transmission so in both the trichuris plus the interobius the mode of transmission is ingestion of the food and wet water which is contaminated with the embryonated eggs okay then infective form becomes the embryonated eggs okay for both of them then the diagnostic form is the eggs only in both of them diagnostic form is the eggs only in both of them so this becomes easy now for remember that trichuris trichura and interobius vermiculus both have the same mode of infect transmission same infective form and the same diagnostic form as well plus the development is also same in both of them plus they reside into the same site that is the large intestine so everything is similar between the trichuris trichura and the interobius vermicularis only there is difference in the shape uh, of the eggs of okay shape of the eggs of the trichuris and the interobius so we will see the uh, section of uh, the eggs of all the parasites later on but let's now concentrate on the life cycle of different parasites or the nematodes so first of all after talking about the mode of transmission infective form and diagnostic form let's talk about the development in the human development in the human so the eggs hatch out in the intestine so there was ingestion of the uh, food or the water which was contaminated with the embryonated egg and then in the intestine the eggs hatches out and they release the l2 larva this is to be kept in mind the l2 larva is released not l1 okay l2 larva is released from the eggs okay and after that the l2 larva molds twice okay molds twice that means l2 from l2 it goes to l3 then and then l3 to l4 so it molds twice and then becomes the adult worm so that means as it goes from l uh, l2 to l3 then from l3 it becomes the adult worm so that is two molting okay that is the two molting okay so larva molds twice and forms the adult worms l2 to l3 and then l3 to adult worm two molting and adult worm is formed after the adult worm is formed then fertilization occurs okay we know that the nematodes are dioecious organisms or dioecious uh, parasites uh, that means uh, the male and the female organs are present separately in two different uh, you know two different parasites so then after that uh, the fertilization occurs after the formation of the adult worms and then after fertilization the females the female parasites lays the unembryonated eggs unembryonated eggs which is released in the feces okay the unembryonated eggs are released in the feces okay and then we see that in the feces in the feces the eggs become embryonated in the feces the eggs become embryonated and then within the egg the uh, larva molds once to produce the l2 larva i mean the uh, two molting occurs that is from egg to the l1 larval stage and then l1 to l2 larval stage okay i think i am able to make you understand that from the egg so suppose this is egg so from the egg it is first within within the egg itself this egg is first converted to l1 larval stage that is first molting and then within egg itself this l1 is converted to l2 l1 is converted to l2 so that is two molting one molting is here and the other molting is here so two molting are occurring within the embryonate egg is itself okay within the embryonate egg itself so thus after the two molting the l2 larval forms are forms within egg itself and when that embryonate embryonate egg with two uh, l2 larval stage is ingested by someone then that causes the infection that causes the infection here okay that causes the infection okay so this is same in both of them the trichuris trichura and the interobius vermicularis the life cycle of the parasites are similar are similar now coming to the ascaris lumbricoids so in the case of ascaris lumbricoids the mode of transmission is same okay the mode of transmission is same that is our ascaris uh, that is our ingestion of the food and water which is contaminated with the embryonated egg 
and then infective form is also same that is embryonated egg then the diagnostic form is also same that is egg so this is similar to the trichuris trichuria and the interovius vermicularis now coming to the the development in the human so in the human there are two stages one is the migratory phase one is the migratory phase and the other one is the intestinal phase so as i told you that these organisms the ascaris lumbricoids the hookworm that is americanus uh, i mean ankylostoma duodenal and the nicator americanus they reside in the small intestine so they uh, also get a chance to roam in other parts of the body as well so they have migratory phase also in their life cycle so the ascaris lumbricoids as the embryonated eggs are ingested the eggs hatch out to release the l2 larva and that l2 molt wants to produce the l3 larva stage and that l3 penetrates the small intestine to reach the portal vein and from the portal vein it reaches to the liver and through liver through the inferior vena cava and through the heart through the inferior vena cava it is reaches to the right side of the heart and from there reaches to the lungs and then in the lungs it molds to produce the l4 larval stage please remember this in the lungs there is molting occurring from l3 to l4 l3 to l4 occurs in the lungs only okay and then l4 like l4 migrates to the pharynx and then gets swallowed again gets swallowed again this is causing the re-entry into the small intestine and this vicious cycle continues okay this vicious cycle continues and then the uh, after the entry into the small intestine what happens is that the l4 molds to the adult form l4 larval stage then molds to form the adult worm adult worm and that after that there occurs the fertilization and the unembryonated eggs are released in the feces the unembryonated eggs are released in the feces in the soil what happens that the unembryonated eggs becomes embryonated and those embryonated eggs and those embryonated eggs what happens is that are going to cause the infection again to the some other human after ingestion of those embryonated eggs only so this is the whole cycle of the life cycle of the ascaris lumbricoids now coming to the hookworm okay hookworm that is the old work hook, old world hookworm is the ankylostoma duodenal and the new world hookworm is the nicator americanus so coming to the life cycle of the hookworms we see that the mode of transmission is completely different so what is the mode of transmission that is the penetration of skin by the l3 larval stage that is the penetration of skin by the l3 larval stage and the infective form is also l3 only and but the diagnostic form is x there also but the diagnostic form is x so we are seeing that the mode of infection of all of uh, uh, the mode of infection plus the infective form plus the diagnostic form is matching with the strongyloides it is matching with the strongyloides see here everything is similar for both of them the hookworm and the strongyloides so the the, pain, uh, the mode of in transmission in case of strongyloides also is the penetration of skin by the l3 larval stage then the infective form in case of strongyloides also is the l3 larval stage but the diagnostic form is larva in case of strongyloides and not the x can you tell me why this is because the strongyloides whenever it lays eggs the egg immediately hatches out into the larva it does not remain viable in the outside world okay it immediately hatches out it is a ovo vivi parent it is a ovo vivi parent that means it immediately hatches out so we are not going to see the eggs now for diagnosis so that's why the diagnostic form in case of strongyloides is the larva but in case of hookworm it is the eggs otherwise the uh, hookworm and the strongyloides the life cycle of both of them are completely similar completely similar okay now coming to the migratory phase in case of the hookworm so in the migratory phase of hookworm what we see is that the l3 larval stage enters into the subcutaneous venules when it penetrates through the skin and then through that through the portal vein which is to liver and uh, from there to the lungs and then migrates to the pharynx and af uh, after it reaches to the pharynx then uh, through the sputum it again is swallowed just similar to the ascaris lumbricoids and as it is swallowed it re-enters the small intestine so there is a vicious cycle going on within the human body itself now and then it starts the intestinal phase so in the intestinal phase we have 
the L3 larva which is molting twice to form the adult worm this is molting twice to form the adult worm and then fertilization occurs and the unembryonated eggs are released in the feces and in the soil the um, unembryonated eggs are converted into the embryonated eggs this is completely similar for the strong styloides also completely similar for the strong styloides also okay the hookworm life cycle is completely same for the strong styloides also okay so uh, by this we come to know how the after entry through the uh, skin penetration the worm is reaching to the gut how is that reaching to the gut so after uh, entry through the subcutaneous venules it is going into the subcutaneous venous plexuses okay so through venous plexuses it is reaching reaching to the portal vein to the liver then inferior vena cava then to the right side of the heart then to the lungs and as after the lungs in the lungs there in the pharynx there is production of sputum so that sputum when swallow it then that uh then that you know the hook worm is entering into the small intestines so this is how the long route uh, the hook worm taking from skin to reach to the liver uh, to reach to the liver and then to the heart and then to the lungs and then to the small intestine okay so that's a long route from skin to the gut okay for the hook worm so this is the life cycle of the hook worm so what i uh, what we have seen is that the life cycle of the trichuris trichura and the enterobius vermicularis the life cycle of the trichuris trichura and the enterobius vermicularis are same to same for each other are same to same okay they are similar and plus the hookworm and the strongyloides are same the life cycle of the hookworm and the strongyloides are same so there is no confusion in that in them if you remember one then you can write others also this this slide this slide just needs a revision of 2 to 3 times and then you will master the life cycle of all the nematodes if you remember or if you revise this slide for 2 to 3 times you will master the you will master all the you know the diagnostics i mean all the life cycle of all the nematodes so that's all for the nematodes for diagnosis you can watch my general parasitology lecture where i have discussed the uh diagnosis the general overview of the diagnosis of the different parasitic infections okay that's all for the nematodes